give it up to Game of Thrones because this is probably one of the few shows that you actually see so many women in power. And it's impressive because this is also back then. Um, in the old, really the olden days. So imagine all of these women, these bomb ass women in power, just doing the damn thing. I have to give them a lot of respect because, of course, they had to claw, literally claw their way in order to get there. But shout out to them for that because it's just wow. So today is the big day. Today is the day where Cersei, Marjorie already has um, done what she needed to do to make sure that she doesn't have to worry about what Cersei's about to go through. But Cersei, as well as Marjorie's brother now, are going to be uh, put on trial for the crimes. And remember, Tommen decided in his <laughs> infinite wisdom, he was going to go and stop the whole barbaric trial by combat. Which means that Cersei now won't really have a cough cough fair trial because trial by combat will have been fine because she has the mountain with her. And as long as she has him, no one really could stop him. So, I felt <laughs> Speaking to Cersei, now everyone is preparing, everyone's getting ready. Tommen doesn't want to go. He's over it. Cersei doesn't want to go. She's over it. Marjorie's brother, um, Sir Lawrence. He's told, you know, his time is ready. And it's interesting because the clothes that they had him wear, I, he blended in with the um, wall so well. It's like, wait a minute. Wait, wait, oh, it's moving. Okay. And you see the high priestess, is, the high um, sparrows ready. And you see Lady Marjorie. And something just felt wrong from the get-go. Something felt really wrong from the get-go. And you see everyone that you like and dislike all there. So it's like, all right, they're ready to go. It's uh, now or never. And uh, the trial starts. Well, actually, before the trial officially starts, you have, well, we'll do a little bit differently. So how it begins is yeah, <laughs> the High Sparrow decides to go. And he basically like, look, Sir Lawrence, what is your decision? And Sir Lawrence is like, screw this. I admit everything. He admits that he was laden with men. He admits that he's lied in front of the court and in front of the gods. He's admitted that he's just done a lot of messed up stuff. So he throws himself at the mercy of the court and please, please, please go easy on him. Go easy on him. That's what he wants. That's what he's looking for. And I'm just thinking to myself, this is the High Sparrow we're talking about. You can't trust him. You cannot trust him. He has his own form of justice. And uh, the High Sparrow is just like, you know what? You are forgiven. And Marjorie's irritated. Of course, uh, Marjorie's father is like, what the hell is he doing? Because he's renouncing his name. He's renouncing his title. Everything. Everything you could possibly think of. And by him doing that, that means that... Uh, now there will be no official Tyrell heir. It stops with him. It pretty much, unless his father goes and somehow impregnates someone else, it pretty much stops with him. Well, actually, it, it, it actually just stops with him. It's pretty messed up, but it actually does stop with him. And so Tommen decides, you know, he's ready to go, and the mountain stops him. He's just like, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Cersei was like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> And I'm thinking, what do you have planned? Cersei, you're not slick. What do you have planned? What do you have planned? Because everyone is there. Everyone and their mother, except for Tommen and Cersei and the Mountain, are all there. All of the High Sparrow's um, little henchmen are there. And we see the little, the little, you know, saved Lannister. That's what I'm calling him. The saved Lannister is there. And... She's just like, you know, Cersei is still in the Red Keep. We need to go and get her. So he goes, he brings a couple of his cronies, and he sees this kid. He's like, something's not right here. He's a Lannister, so he knows something's not right here. He goes and he follows this kid. Why does he follow this kid? I have no idea. You know who else is following? Um, someone that they shouldn't be? The guy who... Gosh, what is the dude's name? Help me out here. Oh yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. Help me out here. What's the dude's name that, you know, he pretends he's old and crepid, 
but well he's really tall old decrepit guy but he actually is <laughs> sleeping around with every little harlot he can find and doing all this other stuff but he's being really judgmental that guy yeah so he basically gets led somewhere um Cersei's new Vars was like you know you're pretty much screwed and we see all these damn kids we're like why are all these kids here why are all these kids here they have knives I'm like oh 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 snap it's almost time it's almost 20 minutes in they won't they won't yes they will Cersei's Vars new Vars is just like you know your time has come I'm sorry to have to do this, but not really. Um, you don't really deserve to die this way, but you kind of do. And they go and they stab him. They stab him. They stab him. You just see blood, blood, stab, stab, stab. He's not the only one that gets stabbed. Now, the reformed Lannister, you know, the one that slept with Cersei, he gets stabbed too by the same little boy that he was um, following. And something is off. You can tell something's off because you're looking, you're looking at him and you're thinking to yourselves, why in the hell is he there? Why is he down there? He's down there because remember the green uh, explosive substance that they used when uh, there was an attack and uh, they used it to hurl it at the ships? Yeah, it's all down there. Every last container of it is down there and some of it is spilt out and it's right under the uh, building where the... um where of course the the high sparrows like building so <laughs> oh, we see this dude crawl and he's trying to blow out the candle but of course he got stabbed and he can't do it he's trying Marjorie oh I miss my Marjorie she was just like look screw whatever the gods that you pray to and listen to me for a second. He was just like, whoo! And I was like, I told you Marjorie was faking it. She was like, you better listen to me. Something is not right. Why is Tommen and why is Cersei not here? This doesn't make any sense. What are you doing? Why are you not paying attention? Come on now. Let's use our brain. Let's focus. He didn't want to do that. And she tried to go. She got her brother and her father they were trying to get out and of course the high sparrow made sure that no one got out we're thinking to ourselves come on now use your stop being so um hard-headed what's wrong with you what go leave go let them through let them pass let all of them go i mean she was like you guys have to get out of here what are you doing and by the time she tried to get out even though she couldn't it was too late <laughs> Cause it blew up! It blew up! It was amazing! Boom! 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 And you see Cersei, she's drinking that wine like, yeah. And you see Tom just like, Oh my god. No! And everyone died. Every single person in that building died. I was like, wait a minute, this is Game of Thrones. Show me a body or else I don't believe it. But they pretty much wanted us to make sure that we knew that everyone, all their bodies were incinerated. There was nothing left. They were just all... Because you saw it. You saw as soon as the flames and the liquid hit them, it just disintegrated their body. All that was left was bone. It, it was crazy. It was crazy. Now, Cersei is back in control, just like she said she uh, she would be eventually. And remember that old rigid, I call her the Iron Maiden? Remember her that she's just like, confess, confess, confess. Cersei's just like, look, the High Sparrow is dead, all of his cronies are dead, and I told you before you die, I'd be the last face that you saw. You are a rigid woman, you don't like to talk. There's just something wrong with you, and so... She was just like, you know, I have something for you. And she was like, I'm ready to die. Oh, die? Honey, no, you'll die one day. That day is not today. So she goes and brings in the mountain and just like, or whatever his name is. Or, and um, he, he, go, he goes, he takes off his helmet. And we're like, Lord Jesus, that, ooh, please put it back on. He takes off, I think, his armor too. I was just like, is he gonna rape her? 
Is he? But Cersei was so petty. She was just like, confess, confess, confess. And I wasn't mad at her for that at that point because that woman did you dirty and it wasn't because of religion. She did it because she got enjoyment out of it. So you know what, Cersei? This is Game of Thrones. Let Petty meet Petty. Get her. But Cersei, that prophecy of all your kids would die, came to pass because even though Tommen wasn't there for the explosion, Tommen was like, I am not built for this. I am not built for this. He takes off of his crown. I was like, Lord Jesus, why'd they leave him in the room by himself? Even I knew that would have been dumb. He's just looking. He's just looking. He just goes, takes off the crown, comes back into the frame, stands on the ledge, and jumps! I'm like, wait a minute. So we just lost Marjorie, High Sparrow, Marjorie's father, her brother, and Tommen in less than 30 minutes. Also, the, um, old guy who pretended to be more uh, sickly than he actually was and um, who else and also the other Lannister boy I'm like what's going, what's going on what's going on so now Jamie of course who doesn't know any of this right now Jamie is just irritated Jamie is listening to what was his name? William, William Frey, Walter Frey, whoever is the head of the Frey family, the old guy. And he's just like, well, you know, they said I couldn't do this, said I couldn't do that, and they all got killed. <laughs> Jamie just has this look of he's disgusted. He's disgusted. And it was interesting because you saw this girl look at him, and I knew something was off, but I didn't know what. She just seemed a little too interested in him really too interested in him and uh so Jamie's talking to what's his name Braun and Braun as we know he's a hoe he's he's the hired help at this point we like him but he is technically the hired help he goes off and uh, about to sleep with two women and aside from that Jamie goes and talks with the head of the household Mr. Frey himself uh and he was just like look so, have you ever actually fought? Like, what do you really do? And it's just like, you know, I don't need to fight. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that because, uh, everyone who is a <coughs> excuse me, everyone who is supposed to be fighters, they ended up dying. I ended up taking them over. Look at the Starks. Look at the Tullys. Look at all of them. It's just like I, 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 I. And Jamie, this is where he came to say, you know. You really have nothing. No one is afraid of a fray. What is a fray? Nobody knows. And what we really care about is a um, Lannister. That's who people respect. That's who people fear. As soon as we leave, who's to say that River Run isn't going to be run over and taken by someone else again? And I was like, <coughs> Jamie? Jamie's pissed. Jamie is pissed. He's over it. I feel like Jamie's tired of playing second fiddle. So, uh, <sighs> Cersei goes and sees Tommen's dead body. I was like, I was upset. I wanted to see how it looked too, because I can imagine he fell, f uh, he did a face plant, so his face probably looked demented. And she was basically like, look, just burn him. Burn him and put him on um, his ashes, spread them in front of the sept. I was like, ooh, petty. <laughs> okay. Okay. She lo she officially lost all of her children, and she knew it would happen. She knew it would happen. Remember, she almost killed them herself when she thought that the castle was going to be overrun before. Now, we get past that, and <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam is going because he needs to be the new, what is it, the new notary? Notary? And uh, the guy who's in charge is just like, yeah, we thought so-and-so was in charge of the Night's Watch. Yeah, he's dead. What about the notary? Yeah, he's dead too. It's just like, well, you know, I wasn't informed. Well, it's just like, well, the notary was dead. So, of course, you couldn't have been informed. It's like, oh, true-ish, true-ish. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, come and follow me. You can come to the library. And you know Sam loves a good library. And of course, he has his baby and his baby's mother. That is it was hilarious when <laughs> Sam's little boo thing was trying to enter. The guy was like, no, no women allowed. No women or children allowed. I'm like, 
I get children because it's a library, but women, <laughs> like, I guess distractions, but gosh, what, would you, who really would want to just 24 hours a day be just around the same sex? That's, no, uh, that's crazy, absolute, absolutely insane. So, while John is talking to the Red Lady, Davis comes in. <laughs> He comes in and he's pissed because he's like, so are you going to tell John or am I? Because he throws this the wooden, um, what is it, an elk or is it a deer? He throws down her feet and he's just like, okay, so tell him what you did. Of course, he went and he sent, he set the um, little girl on fire and the mom and, well, did he set the, was the mom set on fire too or? They all eventually died anyway, but, uh, yeah, so, once John heard about that, he was just like, look, look, I am not here for you, what do you have to say for yourself? She was just like, look, I've wanted to die for years now, because remember, she's an old hag, that, without that necklace, she's an old hag, she's like, I wanted to die for years, but the Lord of life has kept me here, so that's why I'm here. He was just like, lol, you better leave, get on the horse, leave, and don't come back. Because you will die if you come back. And D Davis was just like, you will die if I ever see you again. It's that simple. So I'm like, oh, she's eventually going to die. Because we know in Game of Thrones, everyone eventually sees each other again. So John, he's talking with Sansa, and he's apologizing to Sansa. Well, also kind of shouting her out. Because he's just like, you know, it's thanks to you that we're back home because... You had the foresight, even though I'm like, wait, really? This is the same guy that actually sold you to the Baratheons, and yet you worked with him to get the Lord of the Vale to go and save us. Thank you for doing that, by the way, but what's really good? Do you actually trust him? She was like, I'm not a fool. I do not trust him for a moment, but, and I'm sorry that I didn't tell you about it. Again, that was the main thing. We're like, damn, Sansa, that... They still have a lack of trust. They grew up in the house together, but again, he was seen as the bastard, even though we now know that really wasn't the case. And, uh, I can't wait until that actually comes out, because I did a separate video going off just about that. I was so hyped. But, that was just their main thing. It was just like, so Sansa, you're going to take mother and father's room, my, well, father's room, because, you know, not the same mother. Well, not the same father either, haha! Uh, because... You are the true Bob Stark. And I'm just like, oh, so are you. I just wanted to say it. And um, he was still like, we do need to figure out how to establish some type of trust. Because if we don't, we are going to be screwed. And just like, oh, a white, what was that, a white raven or something like that came. So it's officially winter. I'm thinking, I'm looking up, like, it's been winter for a moment. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, <laughs> You know, Lady Targaryen, Targaryen, Lady, Lady, let's see, uh, Mar Tyrell, Lady Tyrell, Oliga, uh, Lady Tyrell, <laughs> it's just like, you, you and you, what do you have to say? You look like a man, you talk too much, oh, I'm glad you had nothing to say, she did that to the three girls, and then she's talking to the main one, remember, we're back in the sands, how the women overthrew the men. And so, she's just like, look, I'm here because I actually don't know why I'm here. Well, you're here because you need our help, and we need yours. It's like, you want revenge, don't you? <laughs> Cersei killed your family. She took out, she wiped out your whole family like that. And we know exactly who to use to help. And in comes Vars. I'm thinking, what is going on here? Why is Vars here? I'm like, okay, I know he had business elsewhere, but I really hope he's still behind uh, Danny. I still, I really hope he's still behind Danny, and this is his way of infiltrating and making sure that Danny gets all of the allies and power that she needs. And this isn't some, you know, we're gonna go and tell the coordinates or screw her over. I think he really is there to help her. And so this is his best way of doing so. I mean, that would be sick to get all those. See, he did. Damn. But it's really going to be more so like Danny and John Stark's people combined together to take on the White Walkers. That's why I feel like season seven 
and possibly the last season, season 8, would be. But, um... So, Danny has to talk with her lover boy, and she's just like, you know what? You're not going to fight anywhere. You're going to stay here, and you're going to rule in my absence. You're going to do this because you love me. You're going to do this because I'm your queen. You swore an oath to me. He's just like, I did, I did, whatever. So, this is pretty much the end of their relationship. This is the end of their relationship. He's going to go, and he's going to, you know, hold down the fort while she's gone type of thing. And she wants to make sure that... Well, it's not Slaver's Bay anymore. I think it's called the Dragon's Den. Dragon's Bay or something like that. And she wants to make sure that there isn't slavery or any type of foolery that goes on while she's gone. Because that's how it should be. You can't go and make everywhere else great and your own backyard, your own home is messed up. That That's idiotic. So now she goes and she tar talks with Tyrion. And the interesting thing about that is... <sighs> She goes and says how it should have hurt, but I didn't feel anything. I was annoyed during the conversation. I just wanted it to end. I wanted it to end as quickly as possible. And I got that from her. I felt that the conversation, something was off with it. And Tyrion just talks about how, you know, I have to say, I really respect you because at the end of the day, I've never really believed in anything, anything, until I met you. You, I know this sounds corny, I know this sounds cheesy, but you honestly gave me something to believe in, so thank you for that. And, you know, that just uh, cemented what Danny wanted to do. And Danny officially made Tyrion her right hand. So, this is what Tyrion has actually always wanted. He's always wanted to counsel and to feel like his point of view, his opinions, had value that people saw him a certain way. And finally, this woman who was an outcast that was supposed to be killed off is showing him more love and respect than all of his family or anyone else that he's ever come into contact with in all of his years. And so it's like, wow. Wow. So shout out to them. I was like, look at that. And Tyrion also looks like he might have caught some feelings for a little Danny. I caught that. I really did. Now, we're back and... Magister Frey, you know, him with this whole, he's uh, ooling, canoodling over the woman who was originally um, looking after, well, who was looking at James, Jamie, and she's just like, oh, you're not one of mine, and of course, he pats her on the rump, and she gives him this big, loaded piece of, it looks like pie or something like that it almost looks like mincemeat or something like that and i'm just like okay something is not right something doesn't look right about that and i was right because she he was asking where are my sons and she was just like right here he was just like what is wrong with you are you an idiot where are my sons right here the sons were all cut up they were all cut up and made into the meal I was, and guess who it was a mask. It was a fake face. That's why I'm like, wait a minute, Aya. Did the many face god just give you those face? Like, what's really good? That's why I'm like, wait, was he planning this all along so that you can go and get your revenge? Because remember, he essentially wanted you to be able to do that originally when he was outside of his temple. So I'm like, oh! So Aya, she has this knife and she's like, this is for my father. This is for my brother, mainly for my brother and my mom, who you killed when with the wed wedding. Get some. Oh, yeah, and technically also for her uh, either niece or nephew, because, of course, Rob impregnated his wife, so there was that. And I, I was just so shocked that I'm like, Aya, where'd you, how'd you, what, how did Aya get there? Like, what's really going on? So, so shout out to Aya for that. Again, these women are coming into power like no other. Speaking of women, Sansa is talking with Littlefinger. And Littlefinger, you know, he's trying to put the moves on Sansa. And Sansa's just like, look, I essentially used you in order to win this. And he's just like, well, you know, regardless, the Knights of the Vale, because he is technically the right hand, um, uh, Littlefinger, he's like, they're with you. They're on your side. I'm on your side regardless if you love me or not. But you're going to need my help because the other houses aren't going to go and just bend to your will in order to fight for you and fight with you in order to take down um, when the war really starts. And she's just like, oh yeah, he's like, is not a real Stark. You are. You should be the one in power. 
Now we finally get back to Braun and after so long and he's with his um his uncle and his uncle's just like, well, you know, I'm technically like an undead person. Kind of like with Jon Snow. Well, Jon Snow's back, back. Like, he's alive, alive. I wonder, though, if the magic um, would possibly wear off if he also had to go in. Oh, that could be interesting if he had to go in an area like that and he would, like, drop dead. Mm, no, I doubt it. But he's just like, you know, now it's um, up to you guys. I'm going to go elsewhere. Good luck. And basically, Braun is in front of the tree because Bron is the new three-eyed raven three-eyed three-eyed raven sparrow no three-eyed raven and uh so Bron goes and he has not his dream he has a vision and in this vision he's looking and it's like wait a minute he sees his father ned stark he sees his father's sister uh lyanna and so he sees his nephew and his nephew has the same type of mark just like Jon Snow da 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 Jon Snow is indeed Ned Stark's nephew not his son so Jon Snow is indeed a Stark but he's not really just a Stark he is also a Targaryen because uh Ned's sister ran away with the Mad King's son and they and she got pregnant now of course this is all assumed because we didn't fully hear the confirmation but I did a separate video just explaining how you know Jon Snow is possibly a Targaryen and a Snow I mean a Targaryen and a Stark and so with Danny also looking for a suitor it could be Jon Snow so how long is it gonna take before they join forces potentially fall in fake love and then find out oh they're related even though in the franchise like this it really doesn't matter oh yeah I forgot to mention how Cersei was just like you know she bleeped her um she bleeped her brother she enjoyed bleeping her brother and her kids are hers and her brothers and all that when she was talking to the woman and she was just like you know I enjoyed doing what I did and I don't regret any of it so now we have to go and uh, get the kingdoms to band together to get the houses to band together the northern houses because right now it's not in chaos but it's in flux and they need all of their support snow's just like I need your help of course Sans is there for support but there's three houses that are still you know not feeling it now remember the little girl um what's her name I forgot what her name is but the little girl who's in charge of one of the northern houses she goes and she gives this rebel rousing speech she was just like you your father was skinned alive by the Baratheons you or Targaryens or um Lannisters you your son was killed you something else happened and you want to actually go and not support this man who show more loyalty and love and this whole time you just see Sansa like you go girl you go girl I wish I was like you when I was younger I'm sure that's what she was thinking but you know the young the young lady she really shamed them she shamed them to the point where they're like you know what you're right at the end of the day he fought for all of us and won even if it was with wildlings and it was with the house of the um guard the night of the veil and all that so respect i have to respect that definitely need to put our support behind someone like that and it was interesting because they're like john snow the true, what was it, the true king of Winterfell, the true king of the north, and because of that, you had Littlefinger, he was pissed, he was just like, Lord Jesus, this is exactly why I didn't want to happen, and Sansa was happy for Snow, but when she looked at Littlefinger, I think she realized that she's still going to always play second fiddle to someone, even though it technically should be her birthright, even though she's not really fighting for it at this point. Now, Jamie has come back, Jamie has come back, and... At this time, he knows what's going on, So, but again, they can't pretend, they have to still pretend like they're not um, in a sexual relationship or that the kids were there. So, he's just there in the background while Cersei gets coronated. So now we have another queen who comes into power. Like I said, I appreciate the show because there's all these women that come into power. Oh yeah, shout out to Hodor. I want to make sure that we don't forget people like Hodor. Um, 
shout out to the other Stark, Stark boy that died. His messed up because he didn't have any scenes. Tommen, I actually like Tommen, even though Tommen didn't do much. So we should have known that he will have gotten the axe. Um, it's characters that you're overall interested in, but don't do anything a lot of the times. That get the axe and you're like, oh, okay. Their death is just like, it happens. It happened. So, it's the one of the last scenes is when we see Theon and Yana or Yara. They're on a ship, they're on a boat, but not any boat. They're on Danny's boat because they're officially a part of Danny's army. And you see Danny's ships, they those ships are bad. Those ships are decked out. You can definitely tell that they are um inspired by the dragons and all of that. And you just see everyone. You see the Death Rocky, you see their horses, you see everything, and I love her symbol, so badass. But at the very end, you see her dragons, fly, all three of her dragons flying above. And you see Danny. she's in the front. She has Grey Worm, she has Tyrion. Varys is there behind her, so I'm like, okay, well, it's really good. Did he set a plan in motion or something? Maybe he did. That's why I'm like, maybe he truly is with her. And, um, Masande is there as well. So I was like, this is how you do it. This is how you... I was like, shout out to Game of Thrones. They really... They came back because we were all like, alright, they're going to have to pick it up because they, were doing, they weren't doing enough. Uh, they were just saying so many things up and we were just like, Lord Jesus, just have some action. Just do something. And they delivered. They really delivered. So shout out to them. Please like, comment, subscribe. I do a host of other recaps and reviews. So if you're interested, please subscribe. And season 7, here we come.